Greetings. That is the worst hello I've ever said at the beginning of any of my videos. Normally I say howdy, but um, today's video is going to be a short one, and I'm dead serious this time because I don't have very much to talk about. So you see this thing at the bottom of the screen? If you ain't seeing that, and I look insane, go to view, and press command bar. So like, the command bar is probably the most underrated Roblox studio feature. Like, I never really see people talk about it. Maybe I'm just like blind and I live under a rock which I do, but this feature can like save you hours with building and it can help you add a lot to your game. And it can, like, when I say save hours, you can really save hours. Like it's so convenient. So I'm gonna show you a few things you can do with it. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. Let's say you had like a lot of an object. So I'm gonna use this plugin. Uh, I'll put it in the description, but like you don't really need to use this. It's just so I can give you an example. So there's these trees. And if you go to workspace and look inside generated trees, you can see there are a model with branches and leaves. So it's pretty simple to tell which ones are which. If I wanted to change like the color, I could highlight all these leaves. Even though there's a, there's a color setting in here, pretend that's not there. Pretend I built this tree. I can go and I can now change the color. That was pretty easy. It didn't take me very long. But like, imagine if I had, I don't know, let's just spam a bunch of trees doesn't have to look good this many trees and they're all models like this i'd have to open up all of these and select all of the leaves or i'd just have to type leaves and i'd have to highlight from here all the way down to here kind of lagging my game but then i can you can see it's really laggy but i can kind of change the color of everything Imagine I had even more trees. Now, if before lagged my game, this is probably going to get to the point where it's just no longer feasible to edit it that way. So what do you do? If you already placed all these trees and say you do have this plugin, well now I have to remove all the trees, change this color, and then redo it again. That took me time. Well, I'm going to show you a quick way to change all the colors of these trees very easily. So, one way you can do it, or the way you can do it, is by creating a script. So ignore this tree spawning script, I'll get into that one later. So we'll add a script into server storage, and we'll do for i, okay, let's make it bigger, for i, b in pairs, game.workspace.generatedTrees, okay, so game.workspace generated trees, get descendants, so I want to get everything that's inside of there, do, and we'll just do if b.name, double equals and as you can see there's branches and their leaves we want to add the leaves they're all named leaves we'll just do leaves then b dot color equals color three dot from rgb and i'll make it this purple color so if we run the game all these trees will change color but i want them to change color in studio not just in game well that's where command bar comes in handy i can just copy this code Base into command bar, press enter. All the trees are purple now. That fast. That's pretty cool, right? So all of these trees leaves are now purple. But before using the plugin, the trees leaves had like slight variations to their color. So they weren't just all the same exact color. Like not every leaf is the exact same shade of green. So I did this off screen, but I'm gonna explain it. I lowered so this is the same uh, color RGB value, except I lowered the 255 to 100, and then I, I don't want an update. You go away. You go, you go away. All right. So I lowered the uh, the B value, the blue, to 100 instead of being 255, and then I did plus math.random anywhere from 0 to 15. So it can add just a slight difference to the color. So it's going to be darker now because I lowered the amount of blue. So if I paste this into the... Um, command bar and press enter you'll see we get these darker trees but if you look closely it's easier to see if i spam the script you see that how they're slightly changing colors there's slight variation to like the colors so if i make this instead of 15 i make it like 50 you'll see very obvious like differences it won't just be subtle you'll see whole like different colors yeah see that it's just changing up the colors so now there's variation so if you lower the amount of like math.random if you lower the threshold you can get a pretty nice effect without having to go through and manually color all these like you know how long this would have taken before 
Like this would have sucked. And this is just one of the examples. So I'm gonna show you another example. So imagine you had, I don't know, a rock. So we're just gonna make this a little cube that has, let's see if there's a rock texture. I'm pretty sure there is. I'm just gonna give it the basalt. The basalt, I'm probably not saying that right. I have terrible reading. I play Roblox, I can't read. All right, so I have this rock. I'm gonna anchor it. I'm gonna name it rock. Say I wanted these to be everywhere. I wanted this all over the ground. I wanted like random rotations, random scales maybe. But look, this is gonna take a long time to do. Well, we can write a script for this and make the game do it for us and just run it in this command bar. So I'm gonna clear the command bar and I already have this script written. I'm gonna explain it. This is built for a tree. So like, instead of tree, I'm gonna change it to be local rock equals game.workspace.rock clone. Then we'll replace all these trees real quick. All right, everything's fixed. So in this script, the rock is this little thing in workspace. It's this little one right here. Then there's a, so I'm cloning it. So when I duplicate it, it doesn't take this rock and just move it around to random positions. I want to make a new rock and put the new rock in a random position. So I have this loop. It says for I equals one, 600 do. So it's gonna loop 600 times. It starts at one. So if I just, I'm gonna blank this out. So if I do for I equals one, 600 do, and I do print, hello, I've printed, I'll put a space, dot dot, I, dot dot, oops, I'm struggling, times, it's going to print the, it's going to say, hello, I printed, and it's going to be like, one, two, three, it's just going to keep going, so I'm going to just run the game, I have to enable script, I'm done, you'll see, hello, I printed, and the number of times it printed. So that's basically how that loop works. It just prints a certain amount of times. Meaning there's going to be 600 rocks in this code. That's a lot of rocks. It's probably going to lag your game. You probably don't need that many. So there's the rock right here. Rock clone clones the cloned rock. You probably don't have to do it that way. But I just like to make sure my rock doesn't get taken. So it's setting. So every time it's cloned, the parent is workspace. The position is a vector 3.new with the rock's own position plus math.random on the x-axis and the z-axis. The y-axis doesn't need to be changed because that's height. We don't want the rocks to be in the sky. So we only edit the x and z. So it's the rock's position plus negative 1,000 to 1,000. So negative 1,000 to 1,000 allows it to go basically a cube in all directions. If you just did zero out of 1,000, it would do like a cube here. So the rocks was only spawned from here to like here. But because it's negative a thousand to a thousand, the rocks will cover basically this entire base plate because the base plate's a thousand studs or something like that. And then I did the same thing for orientation. I just uh, added math.random1 to 360 to orientation y. And this right here is orientation y. So like if you rotate this, the way it's moving right now, that's the Y orientation. So if you look here in the C-frame, you can see the middle ones being altered, X, Y, Z. So I only wanted to edit the middle one. I right, let me stop testing, <laughs> play testing. All right. So basically all this is doing is cloning that rock and giving it a random position and a random rotation. So if I copy all this code, paste into workspace, and press enter, now we have rocks everywhere. Now I don't need that much range for the rocks. So I'm going to do control Z and I'm going to lower it to be, I don't know, negative 500 to 500. And I'm going to copy all of this, paste it into the uh, console again. And you'll see that now there's rocks everywhere. The scales aren't exactly changed, but you could change the scale very easily just by adding like scale equals vector three and then using math.randoms and stuff. It's just, it's very easy. Like this is really useful. I didn't have to do like any work to add any of these rocks, but it would have taken me some time to just like, all right, we're gonna do this, this, I don't know. And it, it just works so well being able to use the command bar and just run scripts in studio. Like this took me no time. I was able to easily change the colors 
if I don't like the color of the trees, I can just copy this code. So right here, this is a purple. I'll just make it like this uh, hot pink kind of color. But I'm going to lower this one to be like this 200. So I'll replace this bottom one with 200, uh, 94, 130. I'll copy it. I'll run it. We'll get pinker trees now. But they're not all the same color. Like, they have variation. You can see it changing as I spam enter. It's just really useful being able to use the command bar. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. There's a lot you can do with this. I recommend you just... You can basically run any script. Just don't run loops that are hard to break. Because if you can't break it, you're going to have to close studio. And don't run things that will crash your studio, of course. Like, don't do... Uh, we'll just do... Wow, true, do. If I paste that in here, my studio's going to crash. But before it crashes, I want to make sure the script is saved. Because this project is going to be in the description for anybody who just wants to analyze the code. You can practice here and use this. I highly recommend you use it for your games because this will save you hours building. So the best way to end off the video is to run a script you're not supposed to run. And my studio's crashed. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I'll see you tomorrow, I think. Bye bye Okay, it still hasn't uh, stopped. I think I... Yeah, it's not timing out. I think I have to close studio with Task Manager. Oh, there we go. Please, let me out. Please.